So I just wanted to do a low effort recording, you know, kind of on the fly to test out uh, open shot and recording uh, virtual machine usage with VirtualBox. And um, I've did an in-place upgrade with Fedora using DNF maybe about four times now. And I always forget the steps because it's not as easy to remember as it was with Yum or um, or using like apt-get or something like with Ubuntu or Debian. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just record this and, and you know play around with some stuff. So this is what I'm doing here is I'm upgrading uh, Fedora Workstation 29 to uh, Fedora Workstation 30. And I actually thought 30 was uh, full release at this point, but it's actually still in beta. So this isn't like a complete complete upgrade so um, but the steps nonetheless are the same so the first required command is DNF upgrade dash dash refresh and the steps to follow this process all came from the Fedora project wiki um, if you look up if you look up uh, on their wiki DNF system upgrade it's got step-by-step uh, instructions I mentioned that I've done this uh, in-place upgrade a couple of times. I've only actually had this blown up on me like one time, and that's because during the um, upgrade process, I ran out of disk space. So ultimately, I ended up with a bunch of packages that were upgraded and a bunch that were not. And because of the packages that were not upgraded actually were part of the whole you know, DNF process, I could never fix the uh, broken package dependency uh, nightmare that I was in. So I tried probably for two hours or so to fix it, um, but I, could have, I was never so lucky as to get it back up and running. It was a test box anyway, so I just ended up doing a full reinstall. Uh, but keep that in mind that I'd say you want at least five gigs of uh, free disk space before you do this in-place upgrade because you do not want this process to uh, be incomplete. That being said, though, you'll want to consult the official Fedora documentation on how much free space is required because the five gigs of free space is just my own personal estimate. And the next required command is DNF install DNF dash plugin dash system dash upgrade. Once that is complete, you'll be ready to run DNF system dash upgrade with a bunch of parameters. I'm not going to read that all out loud. The details can be viewed in the video or they can be gotten off the uh, Fedora wiki page. Um, one thing of note is the uh, version number is changeable. So if you were, let's say, on Fedora 28, you could easily make that release number uh, 29 if you wanted to go to the next release. Uh, how long the uh, entire upgrade process uh, takes varies quite a bit. This, this is a test machine that I have maybe um eight to ten software products uh installed that are beyond like the normal install so this is pretty pretty bare bones um it's not i don't have it don't have it loaded up with software products um in my case i think the upgrade takes anywhere from 30 to uh, 50 minutes like in contrast when i upgrade ubuntu on my personal laptop um, i have tons of packages installed and that process uh, takes several hours. I usually just let it run overnight. So I remember when the Fedora project first came out, and I want to say that it was called Fedora Core at that point in time. I think it was like Fedora Core up through uh, releases 1 through 7 or something like that. I haven't followed it extensively since it came out uh, because... Uh, uh, because my understanding was that this platform was always kind of uh, Red Hat's experimental um, playground, more or less. Um, and their concern was so much was not to create a stable desktop or a polished desktop. In contrast to years ago when there used to be an official Red Hat desktop Linux that was extremely polished. And I, I really liked... Um, that distribution, I'd say even kind of more so than Mandrake Linux at the time, which I was a huge fan of as well. Um, it's, I guess you could say it saddened me that Red Hat kind of left the desktop space um, mostly. I mean, I know they kept um, the enterprise workstation uh, distro around, but as far as like the consumer grade desktop, um, that kind of fell by the wayside, side and then Fedora kind of fell into that space. So what is DNF? 
Uh, I have no idea. No, I, I honestly, I don't know much about it. I know it's like the next generation um, version of Yum. Um, I've got plenty of experience of using Yum and using RPM, but not so much with DNF. Um, I don't know all the reasons for its creation. I believe there were some reasons regarding uh, Yum performance, which led to the creation of DNF. Um, I don't fully understand why they didn't uh, just use the Yum name again. But um, again, like I'm not that familiar with it, so I'd say uh, do your own research in that regard. And you'll see here that I'm using the disk free command, and uh, it shows that the install kind of took up um, about a little under 5 gigs. The uh, final step of the DNF system upgrade process is to type in DNF system dash upgrade reboot. I can't remember the first time I started using VirtualBox, but I mean, it was quite a few years ago, at least prior to 2010. Um, I've always been aware of it, of course, being that it's open source. Um, to me, like, you know, VMware Workstation was always like the Cadillac of desktop hypervisor uh, software products. But at some point, I, I felt that VirtualBox became almost not, not exactly on par, but almost on par with all the core features. And it became good enough that um, I started using it exclusively. And, of course, the fact that it's free and open source was a, was a huge, uh, huge plus, right? This part here, actually, in the upper left-hand corner shows you how many, um, shows you the status of how many packages still need to be processed and, and what package is currently being processed. So it's kind of like a numerical uh, progress indicator. And here is the system uh, booting up uh, for the first time after the uh, upgrade has taken place. Anyways, I'm about to wrap this video up. Uh, thank you for watching if you're interested. Um, this was a fairly easy video to make, and I hope to make some more. And lastly, I'll be running some final commands around the 725 mark of this video just to do package cleanups. And here I'm running DNF check, which uh, checks for uh, broken package dependencies. It was also recommended to run DNF system dash upgrade uh, clean. I actually forgot to do that step, but I did run it later on and it didn't show any, um, any packages that need to be cleaned up. And then the final command I used and once, once I realized I needed to include DNF <laughs> in the command line, was uh, DNF uh, clean packages, and as you can see, uh, there was nothing to clean up. So it seems like when you do this DNF system upgrade, that it doesn't leave a lot of baggage behind. But I don't know if that's a firm fact, because again, I, I've only done this a handful of times, and it's always on a test VM. So if you've uh, been through a ton of installs, I don't know if your uh, mileage will be the same or not.